Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for bearing with us through our uh, technical difficulties, but we are going to be live streaming this event through Facebook, so uh, just be aware when you're making comments that you're going to be going out there to the whole world, so uh, keep, let's keep it clean. Um, uh, my name is John Holden, I'm the president of the Edgewater Historical Society as of uh, a week and a half ago. Um, thanks for coming out, we're really delighted to be a part of this. Um, this event grew out of what's normally uh, the uh, bi-monthly uh, Edgewater Historical Society Chicago Book Club, and uh, our Gracious host here today, uh, Joanna Hazelden, is uh, the head librarian here. This is the second busiest branch of the Chicago Public Library System after the Harold Washington, so she works like a Dickens all the time. Um, a real quick uh, uh, overview of the format today. Well, first, before we get started, I want to acknowledge that uh, today's event is taking place on lands that were originally uh, occupied by indigenous people in the Americas. Um, we uh, will open up our program with uh, some video highlights of uh, Mike Royko, uh, as we all knew him. Uh, then afterwards, we'll come back and I will uh, introduce our panel and then turn it over to the panel. We're going to have each of them share a, a few stories uh, with us, and then we'll open it up to the floor for questions and comments as well. So without further ado, why don't we uh, get the video started. Yes. Sort of a bad influence on the youth of America to be smoking during an athletic contest. Not marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Service and I was planning on 
going, uh, when I got out of the service, I was going to use the GI Bill to uh, go into law because uh, the neighborhood I grew up in, the, uh, it was generally felt that uh, becoming a lawyer was about the best way to become financially successful. Becoming a lawyer, you could get options of uh, running politics and stealing a lot of money. I just that I admire him a great deal, and I've always liked him, and I wished he would have a contest whereby the winner would get a chance to go pump crawling with him. To go what? Pump crawling. Crawling? You crawl on pumps? <laughs> not, not in the last four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, it's great to see the man in, in, in the uh, flesh uh, once again. So uh, before we get started with introducing the panel, I just want to acknowledge a few very special guests we have in the audience. Former Governor Pat Quinn. Mm -hmm. Assessor Kagi, but I don't think he's taking complaints today. So. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, Mike's uh, widow, Judy, here with us. Jenna Sam in the front row. Um, someone who's nearly like family, uh, Bill Cianis. Uh, yeah. Son of Sam Cianis. I think without Sam Cianis, maybe there would have been no Mike Royko. But uh, anyhow, uh, we're really, really uh, thrilled to be a part of this, as I said. So uh, without further ado, I'll just introduce our panelists today. Uh, Rick Kogan, um, he's, he's uh, Veteran journalist, as many of you know, he's maybe the, uh, the only person who worked for the Daily News and sometimes in Tribune and still out there working today. There's one other. One other? <laughs> okay, well, he's, he's a rare breed and he's, he's the best reason I know to buy the Tribune. So. He also played softball. And he's also on WGN Radio every Sunday from 5 to 7, and uh, he's a Chicago treasure himself. Uh, Don DeBat, uh, he's, he's that young guy you saw in that uh, Royko with the Goat video, the, the really handsome guy they kept cutting away to, but uh, it was, uh, he was uh, one, of, one of Mike Royko's best uh, softball buddies, uh, so the passion of softball is something that still runs in Don's veins very deeply. He was the uh, uh, real estate editor at the Chicago Sun-Times for many years and had a, a very distinguished career in journalism before he went into his... Uh, Public relations consulting practice. Media consulting. Media consulting. Uh, next, in, in DeBat, I don't know, were you born to play baseball with a name like DeBat? <laughs> <laughs> it's a French name. My father was from New Orleans. Ah, uh, okay. But I think I take it after my mother's side of the family, the Bohemian side. Everybody was like big hands. <laughs> big hands come in handy in softball. Yes. Uh, to, uh, to Don's right, we have uh, Mary Schmeek, the esteemed uh, former Chicago Tribune columnist, Pulitzer Prize-winning columnist, who uh, had the uh, uh, hurried duty to uh, put together a column uh, celebrating Mike's, Roy, Mike's career in life uh, the day he passed away. And it's a, it's a beautiful piece that she shared earlier this week on Facebook. If you want to read that, you can probably find it there. Uh, next to Mary, we have Don Rose, who's a veteran political consultant and restaurant critic and all, all around uh, man of Chicago. Uh, he's been uh, a great resource for, for many, many years. Uh, and I didn't know this aspect of Don's life until I recently reread the uh, Royko biography by Dick Ciccone that uh, Mike Royko and, and Don worked on a, a drive to get Mario Cuomo to run for president. So maybe we can right. hear a little bit more about that. And then last but not least, we have Paul O'Connor, who was one of Mike's many uh, leg men over the years. He was his fourth leg man when you were still at the Daily News. And uh, Paul is also the son of legendary newsman Len O'Connor, who, in addition to Mike Royko's boss, wrote one of the definitive books about Richard J. Daly, uh, Clout. And uh, Paul has done many things in his career. He was also the, the founder of the uh, World Business Chicago organization, which helps promote Chicago as an international destination uh, for business. So 
Uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to ask each of the panelists to just share a few, uh, take a few minutes to share their fondest memories of Mike, and then they'll maybe talk amongst themselves a little bit, and then we'll open it up to the floor. Can I just see a show of hands? How many people actually read the, one of the Royko books? That's probably... Oh, well, okay. Great. So, well, uh, you, you'd probably be still at home reading if you tried to read them all. So, so uh, without further ado, let me introduce you to Rick Hogan. Hi, I'm supposed to moderate this thing, uh, and I'll do my best. I, my my Rico stories would take from now until uh, the pandemic is over to tell you all. Uh, one of the things that so impressed me about those, that short clip here is I wrote the obituaries of not only Mike, but Studs and Tim. And one of the great things, and maybe for me the only good thing about this internet age is, for me, Mike Reichel lives. Tim Weigel lives. Studs Turkle lives. If you don't know how to get a hold of what you just saw, that first thing of Mike in the Billy Goat is one of the great 10 minutes. It's Shakespearean on some level. <laughs> Don, don't you agree? Okay. It, is, it is Shakespearean on some level. It is just Mike talking with some of the ball players uh, making noise behind. And one of the great lines in the 10 minutes is, is about Bill's dad. You hear Mike go, Sammy, Sammy, another round, another round, another round, another round. Another round. <laughs> And Tim, that is part of a long interview, Mike did not do a lot of media, but he did because Tim was a good softball player and a great golf buddy and a great guy. Uh, that's available online. Just put in Mike Rico, Tim Weigel, and you'll get three segments from, you know, when Tim, Tim hosted for a while AM Chicago. Uh, and for a while, Tim hosted uh, the news on Channel 7 with... Uh, before Oprah took over. Uh, Don, tell us how the Daily News softball team began. Is this working? You don't have to stand. <laughs> All softball players have bad knees. <laughs> I've had two Don. that have been replaced. Oh, oh. Two knee replacements in the last uh, two years. So uh, one of them. Uh, happened during a softball game that uh, Mike Royko was pitching, and uh, I got wiped out in a, in a double play. I was playing short center, trying to turn the double play, and some guy rolled blocked me and blew out, you know, my medial uh, collateral. The other one was in Vail skiing. Anyway, uh, I want to closer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Sorry. Um, so uh, I went to the University of Missouri uh, J School, bachelor's and master's, and my roommate, who's in the room here, Don. Garbo, Garbarino, really is the, the key synergist in the start of this softball thing. One day, uh, Garbo says, uh, hey, why don't we start a softball team? And I said, I don't know anything about softball. How do I start a softball team? I'm 25 years old. I've been working for the Daily News for two years, and Mike Royko was like God. You know, I never spoke to the man in two years. He was such a star. Uh, so Garbarino says, no. Oh, Stand up, Garbarino. Stand up so they can acknowledge you. Uh, Garbarino says, well, put a note on the bulletin board in the newsroom and see what happens. And I said, okay. So I put a note up there. I'm starting a softball team. Uh, you know, I work in business. I'm business and real estate reporter or whatever I was doing then. And uh, within the hour, I feel a hand on my shoulder. I'm sitting at my typewriter. This is long before computers. And I look up and it's Mike Roy going up. Like this. I'm in shock. I don't know what to do. And he said, Lad, I understand you're starting a softball team. And I said, Yes, sir, Mr. Royko. Yes, sir. And he said, Here's how we'll do it. I thought it was my team, but now all of a sudden it's his team. And so he said, I'll He'll be the, he wants to be the manager, and, I, and he said, but you'll be the captain. And I said, like an idiot, what are the duties of the captain? <laughs> so, anyway, he told me, well, you gotta make all the phone calls, and uh, make sure that the guys show up for practice. 
And uh, you got, oh, there's this duffel bag full of bats and balls and stuff here. And my nickname is Batman, right? And I think I got it because I was slugging this duffel bag around for years. And then he said, oh, but there's a perk. You get to design the t-shirts. <laughs> wow, it sounded like a pretty good deal at that time. <laughs> so uh, that was the beginning. And the first year, this was an office team. We played, you know, the other papers. Maybe we played eight games. We, I think our record was six and two. And this is 1970, okay? The next year, he calls me into his office around spring training time. And he's a great Cub fan, and he's getting excited about baseball and everything. He says, hey, why don't we start a media softball league? And I said, a whole league? He said, I said, how do you do that? And he said, well, go over to Tony Mendocino in the Park District and tell him I sent you. <laughs> and Tony said, Mike Bregel sent you? And I said, yes, what do you want? And I said, uh, he thought he was getting investigated or something. And he said, well, I said, uh, do you have any available softball diamonds? Because we want to start a league. And he said, Sunday morning from 10 to noon, you can have all the diamonds in Lincoln Park over there by North Avenue. And I said, okay, great. So next thing you know, I'm calling all the papers, the TV stations. We had the, the Sun-Times actually had three teams in the league. They had the, the newsroom guys, the printers, and uh, who was the third? Oh, the advertising guys. And then there's Daily News, the editorial team, and the Tribune, uh, the Wall Street Journal, and all those TV stations, ABC, CBS, all and oh, we also had, Mike insisted that we have the Chicago Council of Lawyers, and Joe Minor, <laughs> so we had a lawyer's team. The season consisted of about, uh, we everybody played everybody once, so it was like maybe 11 games or something like that, then there's playoffs and all that stuff. Meanwhile, little, little I know, he sends me over to McGovern Sporting Goods and we order complete uniforms, silk pants with snaps and stuff, you know. And a really nice mesh jerseys that said Chicago Daily News. And on the back of the jersey, it says Billy Gunt. <laughs> <laughs> but in any time, and the address and the phone number and all that stuff. And I'm going, okay, now, I went to the art department. And John Downs, great artist, I said, John, we need something to jazz up the back of this shirt. And so John Downs designed the Billy Goat buttheads that are on your sign. I don't know where you got the idea. Maybe they were on your sign before, I don't know. So the shirt was done. And I could go on, but that's a 